G'day guys. All right, we finally made it to the mantle clock drawings. Uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky, but it's mostly all skills you've used before. It's just on a bigger scale. Like you can see here, there's a whole lot of you know components to this project, but it's all broken down into individual drawings. So as long as we follow those, I don't think we'll have any problems getting this one done. Uh, just off the bat, I think I'll let you know that I think because when I printed these plans off and actually started making a few of them, uh, I think there are a few missing dimensions. Um, not, not like completely missing, like you can still figure it out, but it's just there are some dimensions that aren't there, but you can figure it out with a bit of um with a bit of common sense. So yeah, we should be we should be fine um getting going with it. But yeah, just sort of you know, there may be a few things we have to sort of guess for lack of a better term. Um okay, so for starters, what we want to do is we want to go into the PDF and we want to go to view, rotate view, and we want to go counterclockwise just to make it this way. And then we also want to click on this button here, or you can go into view again, and we want to go to page display, and we want to go, uh, is it page display or display theme? No, here's here, sorry, it's here, read mode. If we make it read mode, it just zooms it in, it gets rid of those um, toolbars on the side, makes it a little bit bigger, gonna give us a better view. Okay, now that that's set up, we've got to look at this and figure out where do we want to actually start with this. Um, I think the best place to start would probably be the, um, down the bottom work from the bottom to the top maybe i would normally you could work from top to bottom but um we have to put some finials in these three things here and that can be a little bit of a complicated process so i might save those till a little bit later so we can um spend a bit more time on those but for now we'll start with the plinth so that's the plinth front and back and the sides which we can see here is drawing number four and five so all we need to do is scroll down to drawing number four that is the plinth and drawing number five is the sides Okay, so we've got to make two of these and two of these and put them together with, I think you can see, yeah, we got rebates on the corners. Okay, so uh, I think, yeah, this is where I noticed um, the first dimension was missing. I haven't actually put in a, um, a dimension for the width of this piece of timber, uh, which is a bit of a problem. And I don't think I even put the thickness in, but you can get the thickness from here. You can see that part is six millimeters and that is six millimeters. So that's going to be 12, as it says here, to fit into the rebate. So the timber is 12 millimeters thick. Um, but we can go into this next one and we can see from top to bottom here is 70 mil, right? And that's normally the 12 mil stock that you would buy. It's the same stuff you use for your pencil box. It's 12, um, 12 millimeters thick, 70 millimeters wide. So that's the stuff we're using. And it's going to be, this piece is going to be 360 long. So to put that in, grab the rectangle tool and we want to go 12,360. Enter. And we're going to push it up by 70. 70, enter. Okay, look at that. Yeah, um, we're gonna triple click, so select it all, right click, make component, but this time we wanna actually start naming the components. See so yeah, you can give it a definition. Um, yeah, we wanna start naming them because we're gonna have a lot of components in this drawing and later on it might get a little bit confusing if they're all just called component one, two, three. It's better if we actually give them a name. So let's call this one plinth front and back. And create, okay. Now, um, for starters, I guess we could probably put the rebates on the edges. That should be pretty easy. Um, we can just put a rectangle in and we want it to be uh, 12 by six. There we go. We can push that all the way through to the bottom. Over here, put a rectangle in as well. Oh, come on, 12 by six. There we go. And push that through as well. Okay. So we've got the rebates on the sides. Now, it tells us that the student is to customize the design for print front and back. So I haven't given any dimensions for the design I've done here. It's up to you guys to design your own, okay? Get as creative as you want. Um, I'll quickly walk you through how I did this kind of design. Um, most of the time with SketchUp, it's a little bit tricky with curves and things like that to put in you know, accurate dimensions because you're using such like um, big, long curves. Like for this curve here, um, the the center point of that would be somewhere up here so i couldn't actually put in a proper dimension for it um you've just got to you know for lack of a better term you've just got to kind of put tape measure lines in and and wing it you just go for the design you <coughs> you're kind of looking for um so the a good starting point because we want it to be symmetrical would be to find the center so from here to here is 336 oh god what's the middle of that there we go 168 168 enter so now i've got a guide point and the center, and I might even just draw it up to the top. So I've got a center line. Okay, so whatever I draw on this side, I want to copy across or do identically on that side. 
So um, let's see, how could we put this one in? We, we need to leave a gap on the bottom here. Uh, so we're not right on the rebate. So we could leave a gap of maybe 15 millimeters. Yeah, 15 millimeters looks okay. Um, then uh, what we need to do is we, I can this part here, I'll just zoom in so we can see a bit better. Um, this part here kind of looks like there would have been a circle in here and then another arc drawn in and meets it at the tangent point. You know, the tangent point we've spoken about before. So we're looking for, we want to circle somewhere sort of around here. So to put that in, I, again, I just kind of use a tape measure and wing it. I reckon it needs to be about that high. So I look where I'm at, I'm at about 40 mil. So type in 40, what happened there? Hang on. Up on the blue axis, 40 mil. And then we need to go in, I want the diameter of that circle to maybe be, uh, let's see, uh, 20 millimeters. Yeah, 20 millimeters. So we'll, we'll go across, uh, so we need, we need the middle point for the radius. So that'll be 10. So let's go 15 across, okay? So if, then if I put in a circle here that has a radius of 10, it's gonna leave a little bit of a gap for me to put that slope in. See how that slopes in like that? It's sort of going towards the center over here. If I just did it, if I did this first line 10 millimeters away, it would have been directly above and this would have just been a straight line. But because we want it to be uh, sloping in towards the center, we can now use a two point arc and go from here to the tangent point, which is here, right? And then we can just, on the face, I'll hold down shift so it locks on there. Hang on. There we go. And just get a nice sort of smooth curve going from there to there. Okay. So that's how I'd kind of do that. But you know what? That actually, I don't know. I think maybe we should go to this point. I think it looks a bit funny there. Go from here to here. And there we go. That looks better. Okay. So that's a point I've grabbed, just gone down to that point there. And we're going to delete this line later. What we need to do next is put in this little, I don't know, other kind of little half circle. I don't think we need to put in a full circle for this. We could probably just do another two-point arc. So, again, I'll just zoom out, and I'll kind of just figure out where I reckon it needs to go to and from. I reckon that it's, um, let's see, maybe from, it looks like it's about above the center, like the halfway point of the circle. It looks like it's maybe here. So I'm going to go there to there, and we're going to go, let's go 20 millimeters. I think that'll look okay. We've got the two-point arc. We'll go from here to here, and we'll bulge it up, sorry, on this axis. Oh, let me zoom in, I think. There we go. And we just want a little bump, something like that. What have we got? The bulge is 3.2 there. Let's make it 4. Okay. That looks pretty good. Uh, okay, so I've got that in there. I can now erase the bottom of this circle. I've got those two marks. Um, now, let's see. We need to, the next thing we need to do is put in the big curve that goes the whole way along, as you can see in here. We've just got one, that would be a two point arc. You'd click here and here and then bulge it down. Um, but we can't put that in yet because we don't actually have anything on the other side. So we're going to have to copy these three lines so that arc, that arc, and that arc to this other side. So we need to put in the same measurements. We'll go 15 millimeters away from the edge. We will click on those three lines. So this one, this one, and this one. And I'll grab the move tool, hit control to make a copy. I'll move them just up here for now. Right click and flip along the green direction. Yep, green direction. Then I'll grab the bottom again, make sure I get the bottom and move it down to this guide point, okay? So that's how I duplicate those. Now, uh, we'll grab the two-point arc again, and we can go from here to here, and we just want to bulge this down, and we'll just bulge it down until it looks about right. So, uh, let's see what looks about right. Um, I think that looks quite good there, about there, you know, it sort of goes down to the, near the bottom. Oh, it would a little bit higher look nice. Mm, maybe about here. So we're at a bit, it says the radius is about 296.5. Let's make it 300. Whoa. Nope, that's not right. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just undo that. 
I'm not sure what happened there. Um, uh, let me get back in this component and let's get that two point arc again from here to here. And oh, that's better. We're on the bulge now. So the bulge we want about, we've got 25. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we can use the push pull tool and just remove that. And that's our piece done. Okay, let's go edit, delete guides. And yeah, so that's the plinth done. That, and like I did it then, it might have seemed a bit confusing with you know the random tape measure lines and the random circles and arcs and stuff, but that's just how I design it. Like you just got to think of a design that looks good. What I would normally do is draw it down on paper first, sketch out a design and then think, okay, where can I put circles in? Where can I put arcs in? So it looks kind of like that, All right? Um, now let's zoom out on our drawing over here. We need to leave a gap between this one and the copy we make of uh, how long? That's 106 millimeters. Okay, so from here to here, 100. We type in 106. We need to make a copy of this. Uh, I'll press Control, make a copy, and move it there. And I reckon then I can just grab this. Flip it around to 90 degrees, and from that point there to that point there is 106. So that's how far how far apart those two pieces need to be. Okay. Now the next thing I need to draw the plinth sides just here, um, and again just need to customize uh, customize design for the plinth sides. So I just start off by drawing a rectangle from here to here. I'll push it up to the top, and then we'll make it a component. Triple click, right click, make component, and we name it plinth sides. Okay. Okay. Now, double click on this so we can edit it. The only thing you're going to need to think about, and this is something I didn't think about when I did this design because it actually it, um, it turned out to be a bit of an issue. We need to nail this together when we actually make it in the workshop, right? We're going to put a nail through the plinth front into the plinth sides. And if I, if we look at this one with this curve, what happened when I put a nail in? The nail came through here and I actually poked out this side. So we might need to leave a little bit more of a gap here than that tiny little five mil gap or whatever I left. So let's maybe go from here, I don't know, 15 millimeters in. And then from here, 15 millimeters in. Have the two point arc tool and go from here to here. We'll bulge that up until it looks about right. Um, there we go, half circle. I think a half circle looks all right. Yeah, that's pretty good. Or one thing you could do maybe that might look nice is you could we'll go up on the blue axis. I'll hold down shift to lock it on. We could make it so it goes just to the height of that. Um, uh, maybe, um, that I think that looks a bit small, actually. We could do it till it goes up to one of these points. Uh, I think the half circle looked best, which is just there. Okay, we'll leave that. I reckon that looks pretty good. So we click on that, push it in. 12 mil and that's gone. All right, so we can take this piece and we can grab the move tool. We can hit control to make a copy of it and move it over to there. All right, so that there is the plinth finished. Okay, we can, yeah, we'll paint it now. Why not? I was going to say we could paint everything at the end, but we may as well paint as we go so we know what we've finished and what we haven't. Okay, now, oops, what's going on in there? Uh, Okay, um, we'll save this and we're just gonna we'll go file save and we're just gonna save it as where's my folder uh, number 40 or we'll just save it as yeah number 44 mantle clock we won't save it as plinth front and sides we're gonna do everything in this one drawing okay so when we come to do the next bit which I think is the top and base here this piece uh, we're just gonna put it straight on top of this plinth okay and then when we do the sides, these pieces, we're going to put them straight on top of the top and base. Okay, so all the um, all the components we draw are going to be in the one SketchUp file, so that we end up with something like this. Right, we end up with one drawing that looks like that. Okay, so uh, I think the next one we'll do is top and base, and um, yeah, I'll see you in that drawing.